Oh, thank you. I will take a step up and into the cabin of the 2021 GMC Yukon Denali. So the deal with Denali is that it's always kind of been a thin layer of luxury on top of GMC's standard vehicles. You always felt you could peel it off. But GMC doesn't want to be that anymore. They want Denali to be a thoroughbred, full luxury experience. Certainly on par with vehicles in the segment. So they're using the Yukon Denali as a catalyst for that change. The first of many, if you will. Today on miles per hour, we need to see if they pulled that off. If this Yukon Denali feels like the integrated luxury that you would expect. That's today on miles per hour. And before I go, you should probably note that I've got an audio upgrade. Yes, I listened to your comments and I made the change. Hopefully you enjoy this much more. And there it is. The 2021 GMC Yukon Denali. This one is painted pearl beige metallic. It's gonna cost you $500 extra. And I don't know about you, but I've never thought to myself, beige, that's a great color for a car. But this one, eh, it's not what I would think of for beige. It has a benefit, and I'll point that out in a second. But first, if you've not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, tap the bell to get notified, and you will get access to daily uploads. We've got POV day drives, POV night drives, walk-arounds, live Q&As, and reviews like this one, so you don't want to miss out. Get involved, get subscribed, get your content. And if you already are involved and you want to support me, support the car content, a couple ways you can do that. I've got miles per hour t-shirts like the one I'm wearing in any color you so choose. And I also have a Patreon account. You become a patron at various tier levels with different perks for you. But most importantly, the knowledge that you are supporting the channel, supporting this great content. So the announcements are done. Let's hop back in to this mega SUV. So I mentioned there's a benefit to this paint. That is the fact that there are significant standout details, flashy bits, if you will. And for some folks, you don't want to go full on flash. If you choose a paint color more subdued like this one, it's going to bring down the flash just a bit. Whereas if you choose a harsher contrasting color, like a red, for example, then the satin chrome bits are going to really stand out. So that would be the benefit if you wanted to blend in a little more, because if not, man, you've got a lot of grill. How much grill, Miles? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. GMC says the Galvono grill, their design name for it, has 10,000 reflective surfaces. 10,000. So of course we need to spend the next 20 minutes counting those. Let's start here. We've got one and two, and I'm just kidding. We're definitely not gonna do that. But we do need to acknowledge the opulence of this grill, the in-your-faceness of this grill, the fact that it goes in line with what GMC wants to position their Denali brand as. They don't want it to be soft SUV luxury. They want it to be truck luxury. That is their distinction in the marketplace. And so the truck is a box. And so of course it has a big box grill to go with the GMC Sierra Denali's look. This is just to fall in line with that. And gosh, it pains me to say this because I, as a general rule, like to mock large grills because they just don't go with the other aesthetic of the car. But in this case, it just works. Big box grill, big box box, it's fine. And it has this satin chrome trim around the grill. So it's on the grill and then around the grill in like a two and a half inch, half itch. Ah, it's so itchy, two and a half inch border. And then over here, we have LED daytime running lights running in a bracketed style. And that bracket style is gonna make its appearance in a couple other places around the vehicle. So stay tuned for that. So these are LEDs and then they are replaced by amber turn signals. And in here we have stacked crystal looking LED headlights. And if you go in real close, you can see it says LED precision, just in case you forgot. And down here we have some notches running along rails 
for inner housing design work. Down below, we've got LED fog lights. And this is straked. And in fact, there is some pass-through airflow. Look at that. More of that satin chrome finish down here for the LED fog lights, satin chrome down on the bottom with the chin. None of this is passed through. It's just design work. And that is that. Let's look at the pearl beige metallic in the sun. See, it does have some metallic flake. And then let's move to the side. Look at that box. Those boxes go. It's a handsome one. Now in the profile, we can see that this one equipped with the GMC Denali Ultimate Package. It's like $11,800. Comes with a bunch of things I will list out later, but for now, we're just gonna focus on the wheels because as standard, the Yukon Denali comes with 20 inch wheels. And it's so strange to say this, but because of the design of this vehicle, 20 inch wheels would look small, downright small. 22 inch wheels as these are, the machined alloy 22 inch wheels look right. And I, I mean, I, I can even imagine larger wheels still looking okay, but this is just a wild world. 22s look fine. Yeah, they look okay. Large wheel cutouts and then going up close on the spokes, of which there are 12 of them. We've got a darker gray insert and then a more polished outer portion. Again, going with that bracket style, you can even see it in the spokes. It's cool, the continuity of that. Satin chrome for this side sill. Denali spelled out on the driver and passenger door. Look how long this Denali is. That's basically my whole arm. GMC up here with more of the satin chrome bordering it. We've got body, 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 body? Body color matching door mirrors with the black gloss bottom pieces. LED turn signals here. More of the satin chrome for the borders of the windows. And more for the roof rails up here. You can also see the panoramic sunroof that is part of that ultimate package. Stepping back. Here is where you can really see the added length of this generation. So the wheelbase has been lengthened by almost five inches and the overall length of the vehicle compared to last generation is six inches longer. That is going to pay dividends in terms of legroom inside for all rows, cargo capacity in the back and then with all seats folded. It just feels much more spacious. And of course there still is the Yukon XL Denali above this if you need even more passenger and cargo volume. Moving to the back now. We'll see a similar design for the rear to the GMC Acadia, the three row SUV beneath the Yukon in GMC's lineup, specifically with these bracketed LED taillights, yet again, the bracket theme, and they continue into the tailgate. See that on both of those SUVs. Then this satin chrome piece with GMC integrated on the tailgate. And then down here, we've got Yukon and Denali on either side of the handle. And that just looks cluttered to me. Like they just had to get their badges on there. And so they put them on either side of the handle. I don't know why, I guess symmetry, but it just, it looks like an afterthought. Down here, these do look very good. However, the quad exhaust ports with the stepped design they're the right size, they say sportiness, they say premium, that's good. And satin chrome above this black plastic lower bumper. That glass piece right there does raise independently from the tailgate. That is a nice feature that they carry over, carried over from the last generation. And then it also has a kick sensor for hands-free opening. I don't have the key on me right now, so I can't show you that. But when we get to the interior, I will work that in. Speaking of, let's go check that out, shall we?
on our way in, we will note that we have smart key access here with this press of this button. So unlike more contemporary systems that just have a sensor on the inside of the door handle and an indent, this one you do have to press that button to lock or unlock. But when you open the handle, we're gonna see a demo of the power folding side steps that are part of that ultimate package. Nice wide steps to make it much easier for shorter folks or kids to get into a vehicle of this height. Very useful. Looking at this cabin, very pleasing teak slash light shale color combination. There are four different color combos to choose from for the interior with different trim materials. The seats with this wide grain leather, very soft, good feeling with that darker piping around the headrests and the borders of the seats. On the bolsters, we're gonna have this cross hatched stitch. Looks very high end. Continues down on the lower bolster. That piping continues in here as well. Ventilation for the seats. They are heated and ventilated as standard for the front chairs. We've got embroidered Denali on the seat back. Good look. The plushness of the headrest is not to the level of, say, the German BMW Mercedes-Benz headrest with those pillows, but it's pretty darn good. Looking at the door, we're going to start to see the real upgrades that GMC's Denali is making to their vehicles. Specifically, the open pour wood trim. That is a high-class move right there. The look and the texture, real wood, this is, this is a nice, nice touch. Up here, we've got that wide grain leather for the upper panel, maybe where you might rest your arm while holding the steering wheel, your elbow, I should say. And then we've got this satin chrome border beneath the wood grain, satin chrome for a real aluminum door handle. More leather in here, more leather on the actual armrest of the door with a crosshatch stitch. Looks good, and I like the continuation here. The stitch flows into the nice look of that satin chrome just above the Bose speaker covers. You do have a 14 speaker Bose sound system as standard in the Denali. You don't have to pay for the ultimate package to get that. Some plastics here for the window switches, but they aren't cheap plastics. This has a nice feel to it and a good sound. It doesn't sound super cheap. These window switches are the same material. You have power down switches for the rear windows, power up down for the front. One touch, I should, I should say. Would like to see one touch for the rears as well. That would be a nice addition. Then we have power folding mirrors. And I will note that once you get past this line here, this turns into that hard scratchy plastic. It is low enough down on the doors that you're not gonna notice it all the time, but it would be nice if they cut the line here and this was more leather down to here. Instead, it's all the way. This lower portion is all that hard scratch plastics. You do have some storage cubbies in here with rubberized material in both these places that can be removed to make cleaning easy. Good size pockets in there. We'll see if they're large enough for a big bottle. Then looking to the left of the steering wheel, this is still going with that truck theme. Truck drivers like buttons. So we've got a lot of physical buttons here and it doesn't bother me necessarily because having the one touch where you know your what your input is going to be is pretty useful. So we've got the e-brake, the parking brake there. Then we have your some of your active safety goodies over here, the lane keeping assist, traction control, um, hill descent control, parking sensors, auto start stop, and then that's for your AC outlets to turn, to turn them on or off. Your head up display, that's, we'll get to that in a second, but that's how you can control the position of it, the information displayed on it. Down here, we will note this is the four wheel drive version of the GMC Yukon Denali. So we do have four high, four low, two wheel drive, an auto mode that knows when to switch between the two. And then cranking this left or right is going to bring up your drive modes. Again, we'll get to that a bit later your light controls, and then your trailering system. This one is equipped with the trailing towing package. Let's hop on inside, stepping on those wide side sills. Let's hear that door close. Nice and solid. So we are inside the cabin. It sense that I got inside, I closed the door. Should we power it on? Let's do that. So we press the start stop button here. You can hear that V8 coming to life little trick of the dials. 
that air is gonna go crazy. I'm gonna turn that down. Okay, so looking at the steering wheel here, we've got that same plastic material from the window switches. It is soft, it feels high quality, so it doesn't bother me that that is plastic. The leather wrapping for the steering wheel feels really high end, very nice. This, I believe, is genuine aluminum. It has some texture for this pattern. I don't know how I feel about the pattern. It's so small that you don't really notice it. I think that's the best thing I can say about it. There is a, I believe that's genuine. Well, this might be injection molding. I don't think that's actually leather for the airbag cover, but it does feel pretty good. Denali spelled out on the steering wheel, bracketed border there more of the plastic surfacing over on the steering wheel controls here. So we've got controls left and right, but it doesn't feel overly cluttered. I feel like these buttons are all useful. This controls your cruise control and steering wheel heating. That is a standard feature for the Denali. And then we have some media slash smartphone controls. And this is going to control your eight inch TFT display. And this is a real letdown, the gauge cluster here. I realize they're still going with the truck theme, but this could use an upgrade to kind of fall in line with the luxury vehicles on sale right now. These very boring, you know, bracketed off bordered uh, analog gauges just don't, they don't have any life to them. There's nothing really inviting about those. And then the design of this gauge cluster is somewhat odd. You've got all of these temperature and fuel and battery life sensors up there. And then down here, you have a somewhat small TFT screen that you can switch through some various information, navigation, smartphone settings, and then some telemetry data. But that just, I don't know, it, it doesn't look very good to me personally. I've seen it done much better. Up here we are going to see, it's great that we've got a block wall as a background here, because otherwise this might be hard to see, but this is a 15 inch head up display that is part of the ultimate package. And as head-up displays go, this is a pretty solid one. It's not only massive, which really helps to see it with the, just a quick glance, and it is in your peripherals here, um, but also the available information that you have on the screen, your speed, the posted speed limit that it would be, um, I guess in this case, your yaw angle, uh, how much of the four-wheel drive system you're using, where is the power going? and then your um, safety features that you have activated. That is a really good head-up display. So if you're gonna go with head-up display, if you're gonna spend the money, spend it on something like that. That's really well done. This dashboard, I will, you know, I wanna certainly note that unlike the standard GMC Yukon, they completely redesigned the dashboard for the Denali, and that's really separating the two brands, the standard Yukon from the Denali, the luxury pedigree. So this looks so much better than the fixed or floating uh, infotainment that they have on the standard Yukon. The integration here looks top notch. We're gonna see more of that bracket design for your gear selector here. Note that we've got park, reverse. These you're gonna pull on to open. And then when we do that, my seat just vibrated. That is one of the safety features. It vibrated because I was very close to that wall but that is one of the safety features. It will vibrate if you are, um, if automatic emergency braking has to be activated or if you are going to drive into someone to the side of you. So here is your 360 surround view camera on the left. That is standard Denali fare. And then we have up to nine different camera angles as part of the ultimate package. And we can go through those here. We've got a general back, general front, general front, a uh, top view front, top view back, then we've got side views, even at the wheel level. This is for your trailering system. You can back up right to where your hitch would be. Make sure you get that perfect every time. You can add on some camera angles on your trailer so that you have visibility for the length of the trailer. That's really neat. So all of these features for the surround view camera system, very, very useful and really high resolution camera system. I don't know if you can see that very clearly, but it is a good, good system. And that 360 view is so useful. Drive is also a pull as is neutral. And then you do have some manual controls here for the lower panel, not paddles on the steering wheel. They're just going to be manual controls. Hitting it in a park. Oh, I didn't note that you do have some controls on the back of the steering wheel as well for your media and volume. Hard to get to this one with the phone. You can see the panel. 
can also show you some of these stocks. So on the stocks, we've got your wiper controls. That's what your turn signal is going to look and sound like. Hard to hear. And then I did show you the push button ignition and that wide grain leather is all over the dashboard here. That's really a nice touch. You do have the hard scratchy plastics down here where you're not really going to touch. This is an aluminum panel. That one I know for sure because it got cold. This is that nice wide grain leather all throughout the center tunnel. And you've got a storage pocket here, maybe for an envelope or something of that size. The cross, or not the cross, that's just contrast stitching here bordering that. More of that aluminum trim that runs the center here. And then we've got more open grain, open pour wood grain here. You can see here, nice surface. Those pop open and then we can look at the key that's upside down. GMC with a cheapier chrome border up there. And then we have unlock, lock, remote start, that's standard, power lift gate, also standard, and then that's just to open up your glass. Close that up, slide that one forward. We're gonna see we've got wireless smartphone charging as standard, and then we've got a USB-C and a USB port and an SD card slot. In here is gonna be your DC socket. So a lot of different connection points. I like that this is that satin chrome material that didn't cheap out on plastic here. That looks and feels pretty good. You've got full seat heating. You have just your back seat heating with three different stages for each. And then there's your ventilation. Your climb control is gonna be positioned and shown via this digital dial. And there's a, a knurled finish to the border of that. That's, that's another nice touch. Knurled finish is up here for the volume control. And then for your tune slash, this also helps control the infotainment by selecting various things and having a check mark slash go button. Home button here, seat controls. So, I mean, GMC is still sticking with a lot of physical buttons here. And I realize it adds clutter, but when you perhaps close this, it doesn't look too much. And this is something that I think automakers really need to figure out for the future is just the right number of buttons, not cluttering it, but you know, uh, just keeping it, having useful functions easily accessible. GMC maybe has one or two, too many, but it's not cluttered. I wouldn't call it cluttered. Uh, rear climate control, all those functions there. And then looking up at this 10.2 inch widescreen display. It's the latest version of, I know it's Chevy's MySync or my, Chevy's, oh my gosh, I'm blending a whole bunch of automakers here. Chevy's MyLink may be the same for GMC. I know it's running similar software here, but it's the latest version. So it's very quick and responds very much like a smartphone. So the swipe, pinch and zoom functions. Let's go to the navigation, which is gonna be standard on this car. You can see it fires up pretty quickly and then it's really easy to move around. Got a nice home button there. You have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and not just those two, but wireless versions of those. So that's useful. Wi-Fi hotspot, also standard. You've got, if you want to control the climate from up in here, not sure why you would, but you can. Then the camera system, if you just want to open that up and then an app marketplace. So I'm gonna give the infotainment a definite thumbs up. They did a great job with that. Doesn't get too much glare in the sun. Uh, very responsive, good graphics. So that's all a plus. I forgot to show you the drive modes, which I can do here. So you crank that dial off to the left and you bring up, you've got normal, sport, off-road, and then your tow haul mode. If you go into off-road, it is going to raise the vehicle up to that two inch raised position. If you go back in a normal or sport, it will lower it right back. And this one right here has got some buzz. This is the optional power sliding center console. So before we get into that, let's just look at the surface of it. We've got that cross stitched, cross hatched pattern up there. We've got a rubberized piece here, maybe just to stick your smartphone without it moving around and that wide grain leather feels superb. If you wanna open it up, you've got a good size bucket in here, not as deep as if you didn't have the power sliding. Sli power sliding. Mm. Okay, that's all right. Miles, try again. Uh, not as deep as if you did 
didn't have the power sliding center console, but still pretty large. Let's get keys to my house. Look at that. I forgot where they were. Very important stuff. And then back there, you've got a couple cup holders for those rear passengers. So if you do want to slide it on back, you can press this button right here, press the right button, and it will slide back up to 10 inches, which gives you the right amount of space to open up this front drawer for you to stow some items. Items? I'm doing very well today. Stow some items, or you could stick a smaller bag or purse in this front panel here. Most useful for me, in my mind, is bringing those cup holders to those back passengers. But I'll explain why that's an issue as soon as I get to the back. Last couple things before we move back, we see the open pour continues on to the dashboard up here, the leather up here, and then when you get to this line, it turns back into that scratchy plastic. Glove box is, that's kind of small for a vehicle of this size. Wish it was larger. That wide grain leather up on top looks superb. And then as part of the ultimate package, we have the digital rear view mirror. Very useful if you've got a full car with people or stuff. That panoramic sunroof is controlled via these buttons right here. You can also power fold the third row of seating from right here, down or up. Uh, you can set the position of your tailgate height. That is for the sun shade. So I can control that right now. Oh, it takes a minute, doesn't it? Yeah, that's not in a hurry. You can also tilt the sunroof and of course slide it. Wind deflector up there. And note that the sunroof does slide back pretty darn far. This is a good size opening here. Lots of air travel into the cabin. All right, so let's slide that back and head on into the rear seats. See what we've got going on back there. Moving on to these rear seats here. We do have smart key buttons here so you could lock the car and walk away from the rear handle as well. Open those up. The power folding side steps come on out. And a wide door opening means it's gonna be easy to access that second or third row instead of having a wheel well come in like some SUVs. The seats are much more versatile for this generation Yukon. They can slide forward up to five inches, giving the third row passengers more legroom. If you do that, they have up to 10 extra inches of legroom compared to the previous generation. That's huge. And with these seats slid all the way back in their current position, for the second row, you have three extra inches of legroom compared to the previous generation. Big gains, big, big gains from that longer wheelbase. The seat folding controls are really easy here. So this front one is to slide. This one, you're going to pull. Well, before I do that, I just wanna point out that the second row does have armrests and the captain's chairs configuration is standard for the Denali. So you don't have to get the ultimate package to get the captain's chairs configuration. Back to this, pull once to fold flat, pull a second time and it raises up. That's really handy for me when I only have one hand to do things. And you can see the very wide opening to get to that third row. Looking at the third row of seats, they look very welcoming. Same cross stitch pattern, same wide grain leather, same ventilation on the seats. So let's hop on in, see what the digs are. So you can see we've got a cup holder here and a random storage cubby. We do have a USB-C port there for both passengers. We can get a look at the panoramic sunroof. Note that it does stop very much over the second row of seats. So we just get headliner. We don't get a view of the day or night sky. That's a bummer. Note that these headrests do full as well. We'll leave those up. 
or down. And then this is the seat slid back. So you can see what my knee room would be like here as a six foot tall adult. If that seat was slid all the way back, I could even still fit if they needed to have that seat in this furthest back position. We might have a conversation, this person and I, and we might agree that I need a little more leg room, but this is, this is manageable and there are some foot wells. So that decreases the knee angle somewhat. And I have a reasonable amount of thigh support. I would like more and I think I would get more if I could stretch my legs out just a bit. So again, this person and I, we're gonna have a talk. But I also wanna show you with the seat slid forward, which I can get to by pulling this down. And then up, up we go. Okay, so that's with the seat slid forward. And even with it all the way forward, that person would have some knee room, but they could even slide it further back because look at this. I can really stretch out back here. With the foot pockets, my legs at this angle, I've got so much leg room. I wanna say that's five inches of leg room back here. And that's a big win. That is a big win. So let's show you both of these seating positions with it slid all the way back and all the way forward in the second row. So this is all the way back. I have a good amount of leg room. I wanna say another four, four and a half inches of leg room. They stuffed this pocket with all these connections. If I wanted to power up these displays, which you can do, double tap to turn it on, press that to turn it off. But when it's on, you can see we've got multiple connection options. If you wanted to play video games back here, you can plug in your HDMIs. We've got USB-Cs. This one just has a converter on it. And then we've got an AC socket down there. Tri-zone climate control is standard on this car. So one, two, and then three zones. And then, so here I wanna address the flaw of this power sliding console. Great that you can press a button up there to bring it back and store some bags. But what if these passengers back here wanted easier access to their beverage? Well, there is no control back here to slide that back. You have to ask the driver to pre please, pretty please, slide that center console back so I can get my beverage while still sitting comfortably. I cannot just slide it back myself. I really would prefer if there were some controls back here that allow me to do that. But as far as I can tell, you cannot do that. So here is that panoramic sunroof. It stops right there, just above the head of these rear passengers. The panoramic sunroof is an option as part of the ultimate package, by the way. These 12 inch displays have really nice graphics, are pretty quick. Again, behave like a smartphone. So that's gonna be extra useful. Mostly you're just gonna watch movies or whatever back here and you can pair up your wireless Bluetooth head, headphones and uh, go from there. All right, so I showed you this with the seats back, what that legroom looks like. What if I had to slide these seats all the way forward? Well, you know what, I'd still fit. Not necessarily super comfortably, but again, we could come to a compromise and I could slide these seats back just a bit, give myself some room, but giving that third row passenger plenty. Here's a good look at the dashboard in the front. Okay, so let's go look at the cargo capacity, which is another place that this vehicle has serious gains compared to the previous generation. I'm just gonna grab that key and turn it off so I can show you that smart key access. Or sorry, the hands-free tailgate. Making sure the car is unlocked. Find the sensor there, kick, and door opens right up. That never works for me first time. You can hear the air suspension lowering itself to give you easier access for your cargo. Power folding button up here. This is all gonna be scratchy plastic up in here. Scratchy plastic in here, but we do have these aluminum plates to protect it from scratching up. That's not gonna do a whole lot. It will still get scratched, uh, but we do have this cover here, this plastic cover, so you're not gonna get metal, or sorry, paint scratches from your cargo. You may still want some protection here though, because that could get bumped 
as you're lifting things up and over. And unlike some uh, premium SUVs that have controls for the air suspension to just lower it, this one does not. You do, however, have some power folding controls for the seats. So we've got an AC socket there. And then if you want to fold these third row, this third row, press and hold those down. That one got a little stuck, but no worries here. We can just press these buttons and those are gonna fold forward. And then I press that one more time and he goes to the right spot. So I'm gonna list the cargo specs um, to show you just how massive this is. This area here is truly enormous. Why you would need the XL version of the Yukon is beyond me, but maybe you have some specialized use case for it. But I will note that the cargo capacity behind the third row is up like 60% compared to the previous generation. And then the full-on cargo capacity is up 28 cubic feet compared to the previous version. So you can really see the gains that they've made here. Substantial cargo capacity. You gotta carry stuff, this is your SUV. So you can power open, power raise rather, this third row. But you cannot do that for the second row. You're gonna have to do that with a button here, press this button, JK, I'm totally wrong, we saw that I'm wrong, <laughs> press the button uh, and it will lift the seat up so it can give you access easier, or you can do it manually, but you can also press the button and it will fold it so you don't have to do it manually. You can press the button and it will fold the seat. Press it again, and it will raise the seat. Okay, but if you want to put it up, you're gonna to have to do that manually. I learned something just now. You watched it, you're welcome. All right, and with all that done, it's time to turn this bad boy on, rev it up, and go for a drive. Uh, you know what? There's one thing I forgot before we can shove off. What do we think it is? What haven't I done? Yeah, I haven't done the big bottle test. So we need to see where our big bottle can go in the GMC Yukon Denali. Let's try the cup holders first. Let's see, ooh, rubberized, that's nice, but no, they're not gonna go unless you wanna leave it like that, which you could, so that's an option. How about this center storage bin? Oh, that looks like it's gonna have plenty of space. Probably fit two of these in there. Yes, you can fit more than one big bottle in that center bin, I'm guessing. How about the storage pockets in the door? Oh yeah, that's just fine. Multiple options in the GMC Yukon Denali. All right, we'll leave it there because I'm not gonna try the glove box. It doesn't need to do it. We have options, it passes. And with that, let's rev this bad boy up and get moving. GMC Yukon Denali in motion. We've just heard the 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 motor. That is a carryover from the previous generation, so it still makes 420 horsepower and 480 pound-feet of torque. It is connected to a 10-speed automatic gearbox and your choice of rear-wheel drive, or as this one is equipped, four-wheel drive. It is genuine four-wheel drive with the two-speed transfer case. And your zero to 60 time is not going to be that fast. It's going to be 6.8 seconds, and your top speed is gonna be 110 miles an hour, but do you really care? Because you've got 6,000 pounds to look around. There's only so much a V8 motor can do to fight physics. But it, it has pickup. It definitely has pickup, especially mid-range. From a dig, it doesn't feel very fast. But mid-range, the 10-speed knows when to kick down to give you that power but it also knows when to try to optimize fuel economy, get cl as close as possible to that 10th speed, and to use the available cylinder deactivation technology to have this Yukon Denali run on as few as two cylinders, 
under very specific circumstances. Not all the time. Most of the time on the highway, it'll kick it down to four cylinders, but under very particular circumstances, basically when you're not even touching the throttle, just cruising along, maybe at the highway at like 60 miles an hour, it might get to two cylinders, but there's only so much it can do because of the weight I mentioned. So you're looking at 14 city, 19 highway, and 16 combined MPG. Not great for the four wheel drive version of this SUV you never really escape the fact that this is a truck. And that is also made clear from the driving experience because your seating position is fully commanding. I'm looking out over my domain and the center of gravity is really very high on this one, but you do have some things coming to your aid so you're not sloshing about in a truck. You have the standard Magnaride adaptive dampers and on this one, as optioned as part of the ultimate package, you have an air ride four corner air suspension system. Those things working together are going to really soften up the ride. The Magna Ride is going to know when it needs to cushion up and when it needs to stiffen up for corners. And the air ride is going to work in that benefit as well. The air ride also has a use off road because it can raise the suspension up two inches to give you additional ground clearance. Yet, if you really want to go off-road constantly but still have the luxury touches in a truck situation, then you might be interested in the new Denali AT4. That is going to have more off-road goodies like all-terrain tires, it's going to have tow hooks in the front, it's going to have skid plates, and a better approach angle. So that one might be more up your alley. This can still definitely do it. And it also has, as part of the ultimate package, an electronic limited slip rear differential, which is sports car stuff, putting traction, uh, we're putting power where there is traction, but it really works off road because you're sliding around and it knows what wheel needs power at that given moment. But in the corner, it also works so that you can put your foot in it and really feel confident. And that's mostly gonna be useful in emergency situations where you're gonna to need to get out of the way or you need to take a corner quickly for some reason. Don't think you can start keeping up with BMW X5 M's in corners. That's not what the purpose is, but it is definitely a safety feature and it is definitely useful off-road. So those are the elements of the driving experience with the GMC Yukon Denali. And I will also speak to the comforts here. So this seating position is pretty darn good. I already mentioned the visibility out over the hood. The visibility uh, behind me, visibility, is not the best because we've got pretty thick C and D pillars back there. So you're really gonna be leaning on the active safety features like blind spot monitoring. Thankfully, that is standard along with automatic emergency braking and lane keeping assist and lane departure warning. One thing not standard that is part of the ultimate package on this model is adaptive cruise control. It's kind of odd that they separate those two, but you will be leaning on those safety features because the visibility around you is not great, only in front of you. But the seating position apart from that is very comfortable. You've got the ventilation, you've got the heating. I wish you had massaging. And the road noise and wind noise is pretty darn good in here. For how boxy this truck is, that is kind of taking away from the truck experience with the fact that the wind noise at freeway speeds is really very minimal. And we can thank the air suspension a little for that because it's self-leveling and it will lower the vehicle at freeway speeds so you're not getting too much of the aerodynamics working against you of the big block in the front of the truck. So all those things are good. The luxury experience is pretty solid. And the fact that it's a truck is never lost on you. You still know that. The safety features are good. They could use some work, to be honest, especially the lane keeping aid. It's not at the level of the Germans. It definitely ping pongs you a bit in the lane and will let you go over the lane markers. It's not the steering assistance that we've come to know and appreciate about, for example, Mercedes Benz vehicles, but it does a decent job. So all that to say, that the GMC Yukon Denali is not just a thin layer of luxury anymore. This feels like a fully put together luxury vehicle with that same truckish body on frame, driving dynamics and durability that you would expect. But that independent rear suspension, the Magna Ride dampers, the air suspension, the electronic limited slip differential, those all work to make this much more than just a truck. It is not the harshness of a vehicle like that. 
But is it the best way for you to spend your 70 plus thousand dollars on a four wheel drive truck-ish luxury experience? So as competitors, we have the Lincoln Navigator, which was recently, I think in 2018, completely overhauled. The interior of that one was so done up, so much better. It has that twin turbo V6, so it gets better fuel economy than this, 18 combined, with the all wheel drive version of that. That one doesn't have a genuine two speed transfer case. That one, you're not gonna wanna do any real hardcore off-roading, but it is very nice to drive. And then you also have, from within GM's own portfolio, we have the Cadillac Escalade, which was just redesigned like this one for 2021. Oh, here's a good test. Turning radius, that's something that's gonna matter to you if you're buying a vehicle of this size. Can it make this pretty narrow? Wow. Wow. Guys, you didn't see what I just saw, but that was pretty impressive. That was a really tight little turnaround and we did it. Okay, that is something that's gonna matter. Anyway, back to the Escalade. So the Escalade has something that the GMC Denali brand does not, and that is brand cash. So over the years, the Escalade has really built itself up into this really posh, on the level of a Land Rover, Range Rover kind of luxury vehicle. And so the overhaul really is supposed to meant to continue that, whereas the GMC Yukon Denali is really trying to get there. So the fact that the Lincoln Navigator at $76,000 has more power, 450 horsepower compared to 420 in this, better fuel economy, and arguably a nicer interior, that's one thing. But the Escalade costing only 5,000 more than the starting price of this, 72,000 to start for the Yukon Denali, 77,000 for the Escalade, but really offering the same experience that people have come to expect along with a brand cash makes it such that the GMC Yukon has its work cut out for it. The Denali, the Denali has its work cut out for it to really feel like it's going to edge out the Escalade or at least steal maybe some of its market share. GM is hoping they don't steal the market share of that. They're hoping they take away from the Navigator, but we'll see. Does this feel like it's worth the money at $72,000 to start, 83 as tested with the Ultimate Package and the power sliding center console? I think it is. I think it's worth the money. I think they've done enough to really gussy up this car that it no longer feels like a thin layer of luxury. It feels well integrated. It feels premium. The ride is so nice and you still have that truck-like durability. You still have that driving experience that if you want that out of a truck, you're gonna get it here. Is it better than the Escalade? I would say it's probably on par but then you have the Escalade brand cash and you have the visibility that I think people have when they drive an Escalade. Whether it's better than the Navigator, I think it's very, very close. I think it's so close that Lincoln should probably be worried. And that I don't think they expected so soon after completely overhauling that vehicle. Is it the best in segment for the price? Probably. Yeah, at $72,000 to start, if you don't go crazy with the options, this is a heck of an SUV with thorough amounts of luxury, and I don't think it gives anything up to the competitors. Whether the styling, the bling is what you want, that's up to you. But I am really impressed with this 2021 GMC Yukon Denali. Work on those safety features, and that's pretty much it. They've, they've kind of nailed it in all other regards. So thank you for watching this review on miles per hour. I will see you next time.